Good morning everybody, it's Lady Dre 1977 and I'm back with another video. I'm out here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Just to walk and to talk about a movie that I saw. I sat and watched it in full. It's called Black Girl <clears throat> from 1972. And I'm just going to give, you know, my description on what I saw in this movie and how it can apply to, how it applied to my life because it was um, triggering to me. And I'm sure for some of you all who've seen it before, it. Uh, may have triggered some of you who have gone through narcissistic abuse the crabs in the barrel mentality so you have this family you have this woman named Rosie and her three children were living with her mother and her mother's boyfriend who was what you later find out was a deacon in a church and the mother was not married but anyway what you learn in this movie whew, you have this last child who's treated as a scapegoat she wants to dance and she's dancing in a bar she's rather young and she was trying to make money to buy her mother who did not treat her well she wanted to buy her mother a house. And her older sisters, I believe, were very jealous of her. They really didn't get anywhere in life. And for what I saw, they didn't want her, the younger sister, to get anywhere in life. And from the mother's perspective, what made it worse was, here's the mother who is talking about some other girl played by Leslie Uggams. And she is in school and college and she's just bragging and, you know, ragging on her. Just, oh, she's done such wonderful things. And, you know, I'm just so proud of her. And, I mean, she's just doing this in the presence of her daughters. And her, it makes her daughters feel some kind of way. Now, you learn in the movie that this mother, the character, Rosie, really didn't do much with her life. She was raised by her mother's sister, and I'm assuming that the sister just really just would not ever let her live it down that she raised her sister's daughter. She put that in Rosie's face uh, very often, so much to the point that where when she reconnects with her real mother, she doesn't let her live it down either. And she's walking around in this anger and this angst this frustration and she really didn't do much with her life and she just she was not a happy person and her mother just kept trying to get her to understand I, I hear what you're saying but at some point you got to let this go and we know that I, I know for my mother the same thing kind of happened I had my grandmother, who was very young, had my mother at 16. And my grandmother's aunt and her mom would look after my mother until, I guess, one day. I don't know the full story. I've heard it so many times. But my grandmother's aunt who was my great great aunt would raise my mother and I think my mother just really felt like you know why didn't you raise me 
with the other children, your other children. And I believe that there's roots of narcissism there. I know definitely with my mother. And they just carry this bitterness with them. They, they open themselves to what I talked about previously, what many people have talked about previously. They open themselves to demons. They do. And they allow these demons to just cripple them. And they don't realize it. And they try to ruin you. They don't want you to get anywhere in life. Okay? That's how it starts out. And especially for the scapegoat child. If the scapegoat child seems to have better opportunities, it's prettier. Um, seems like they just have something that that narcissistic parent don't have that narcissistic parent is not gonna like you my mother didn't like me she didn't and early in my life I knew that something was off and I didn't like her I didn't like the way she treated me at all I'm not saying that I was a perfect kid but I could tell something was wrong but anyway in the movie you see this played out how the mother uses shame against her daughters to make them feel like she felt like nothing and this uh, daughter that she just loved so much this random woman who wasn't part of her family it wasn't her fault would come by request of Rosie the mother to visit and Rosie's daughters you know hearing her go on and on and on about how much they loved this girl they were already defensive and had set up a plan to just really I, I, I mean try to rip her apart I mean just the girl came to visit by request of the mother and when she gets there the three th daughters are I mean just ripping her apart you've now you've involved the scapegoat child your baby sister to try and play a game with her you talking to her all kinds of sideways oh my goodness the way they talk to her I mean it was just horrible and the girl whose mother uh, she ran away from her and I guess Rosie took her in and she just got close to her and tried to make the child her own and the oldest daughter would oh my gosh just say all kind of horrible things about this girl's mother called her crazy pretty much and pulled the knife on her I tell you, the anger that these narcissists can cause somebody, uh, the games that they play is just horrible. It's terrible. The oldest child was as mean as the mama. The middle child who's pregnant is just running up underneath the oldest child and doing everything you know she's saying the ringleader and then there's this hate against the younger child so in this scene where you have this girl who went off to college Wesley Ogham's character The three girls try to come up against her. The youngest one who's, you know, brought into the oldest and the middle child's foolishness tries to play games with Leslie Uckham's character. Talking to her all nasty, ragging on her because she goes to college. and Oh, you have been touched by a man and all of this. And, you know how folks can be. When they, and I'm not going to say all of them don't have opportunities because some do. 
but they want to stay in the foolishness. Crabs in a barrel mentality. And they're taught that by who? People who've been taught that. They talk so bad to her. The older sister pulls a knife on her. And so she just took her suitcase and left. But she did talk some sense into the youngest daughter who liked to dance. And they would come together, you see, in the movie if you watch it. If you feel like this is something that may trigger you, that's just a word of warning. If you feel like you can't watch it, don't. It did trigger me. It triggered me. It took me back down memory lane. But um, at the end, the youngest daughter decides to finish high school because she dropped out. Because she just, you know, she wanted to stay around her family. And the crabs and the barrel people. And when she found out and saw what they were doing, she said, uh-uh. No, no, no. I have this opportunity. I'm going to finish high school and then I'm going to go to college. And as she's leaving at the end, her grandmother, you know, who really was the eye opener, even though she did her thing in her life, but she knew we all fall short of God's glory. We have all done things. Yeah, even narcissists. But you have to let go. You have to forgive, which many narcissists do not do. They hold on. And you have to go on about your life and live your life. And Mama Rosie didn't want to do that. She didn't do anything in her life. She didn't teach her daughters to do anything in their lives until the youngest girl decided by this uh, woman, Leslie Uggams' character, who was not in their family, but stayed there until she moved on and made a decision. I tell you, dysfunction is a killer. It keeps you from rising and becoming what you were meant to be. And narcissists love to keep you there. They love to keep you there in that dysfunction. You can't ever go anywhere or do anything big. But let me tell you what you got to do. You have to get away. They are not going to change. The narcissistic mother, who was not going to even in the movie, come out to tell her daughter goodbye. The daughter is telling her bye. I'll write. I'll call. She wouldn't come out until the very end. And that's when she said, you know, I didn't really show my daughters, you know, I really did not present to them a life that they could live where they were doing something. There was really no apology to the daughter. <laughs> Narcissists are not going to apologize because they don't feel as though they have to. I'm not apologizing. I'm not taking accountability for what I did or said. Okay. You may not be held accountable because of us. Oh, but God will hold you accountable, okay? He wants you to repent of that. He wants you to let go of the past. Remember not the former things. I have problems with that and I have to pray and ask God, help me, Lord, please, to let go of the former and embrace the new. You're not going to get nowhere in life holding on to it. You take the lessons from it. Learn, understand, grow, and you keep it moving, okay? I just wanted to come on here and talk about that.
that movie and its importance and the sadness of narcissism, crabs in a barrel mentality. Y'all, you got to get away from that stuff because it will kill you, okay? Narcissism and the dysfunction that they cause and those who enable narcissists and those who are toxic codependents you have to get away from that you have to learn you have to you know really open yourselves up to change okay it's not easy but it's something that can be done and you have to prepare for people to go against you to talk about you because uh, narcissists are going to do a smear campaign and their enablers and even their toxic codependents are going to stand with it and just be prepared y'all okay hold on to Christ repent <clears throat> pray for forgiveness pray and fast and let him take you what he intends to do so okay i hope you all have a blessed blessed day and i will talk with you all soon take care bye bye